Hi everyone, in this video we're just going to continue working through uh, examples of solving trig equations and we're just going to try and step up the difficulty a little bit at a time and see if we can work our way up to at least dealing with a little bit of the mess that you're going to run into. Okay, so sine of alpha is equal to negative 0.45. So again, I would always draw myself a picture. We're very regularly going to need to use some symmetry on the unit circle when we're solving these. And without the picture, I find that people make a lot of mistakes. So we are being asked to find all arc lengths alpha that make our y value on the unit circle negative 0.45. Okay, so... I can see kind of what I'm aiming for in this picture, but the one little bit of trickiness here is that negative 0.45 is not a special value. So you don't want to look at this and say, well, that's close to negative 0.5, which means alpha is roughly negative pi over 6. Uh, what you want to do at this point is let your calculator do the work and give you a good approximation. So we're going to ask our calculator, move up just a little so you can see this. Okay, we're going to ask it for the inverse sine. So second sine of negative 0.45. And I can even write this step out since I haven't yet. So the first step to try and solve this thing algebraically would be to say to get rid of a sign, we need to use an inverse sign. If we take inverse sine of both sides, on the left we'll just be left with an alpha. And on the right we'll have inverse sine of negative 0.45, which is, let's make this approximate now, negative 0.467-ish. Uh, I want to see to the nearest hundredth or thousandth, say. I want to see at least a couple of decimal places because we are looking at some small numbers here, uh, but I don't need to see more than two or three. Okay, so what we've done is we've asked our calculator to tell us one of the arc lengths. Uh, and you should be using your calculator only if you don't have special values. So if that really was negative one half, I would not have touched the calculator in this problem. So yes, you can use your calculator on the next exam, but you want to use it very carefully. You still need to be looking for those special values. Okay, so for starters, you want to ask yourself which arc length you found. We've got a small negative arc length, so that's going to be the one that lands us at the point in quadrant four. So negative 0.467. This is where the symmetry comes into play. We also need to find an arc length that lands at this point over here. And your calculator is not going to give you that one. Uh, inverse sine will always give you an arc length between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And we have to know how to find the other one. So the other one, there's more than one way to get there. So one possibility is I start at 1, 0, and I head around this direction. If you want to do that one, you're going to say, okay, well, I went pi, and then I went this additional little bit, which is just a reflection across the y-axis of our arc length we started with. So this is a pi plus a 0.467. So we went ahead counterclockwise pi and then counterclockwise another 0.47. It's also completely valid to head the other direction. So you don't have to do both, but just to show you some choices. There are infinitely many, but here are a couple of common ones. This would be a valid uh, path to take as well. And that one would be negative pi plus 0.467. So uh, again here, negative pi takes you here, but we're actually not supposed to go quite that far. We're supposed to stop positive 0.467 short of that. So that would be a pathway to get to that point. So there's two options. You only need one, but there are two. So I'm going to go with the, uh, it doesn't matter. Let's do the bottom one. Oh, I don't need that again. Negative pi plus 0.467. Okay, so... I have found one arc length that lands at one of the points that I'm interested in, so a single solution. My next step was to find a solution that will land me at the other point. I at least want to make sure that I've hit both points. What I have left to do is use the period of the function 
to help me um, explain all solutions instead of just this one solution. So once again, we can check back up here and we say, okay, well, this is just sine of alpha, so it's not compressed or stretched. Its period should be 2 pi. So we'll just say plus 2 pi k, and that's going to be true for both of these, where k is an integer. So again, you pick out one solution to start with, and then you use the period to say, yes, this is a solution. And so for example, right here, if I go two pi units around the circle either direction, I'll find another solution because I'll be back at the correct point. So again, here k is the number of laps around the circle that you've gone. So if you want to go three laps around the circle, you let k be three, and you'd have your original solution plus six pi. Okay, so this is the all solutions. Okay, we, I don't have it written in my directions here, but I know in your homework I also sometimes ask you to identify certain solutions. And this is just to make sure you're understanding the k-pi notation and understanding the unit circle. Uh, so let's say instead of asking for all solutions, I wanted you to find... Uh, solutions on 0 to 2 pi. So this is saying, I want you to solve this equation, but I don't need any of this 2 pi k nonsense. I really only want to find the solutions that are in your first lap counterclockwise around the circle. So if you start from 1, 0, and you do one full lap around the circle, you'll hit each solution, each point, one time. And I want to know which arc lengths uh, are required to get to those solutions in your first lap around the circle. So we're looking for the solution that lands at this point and is between 0 and 2 pi. So remember, we know about what 2 pi, 2 pi is. Uh, this is saying we want any answers that are bigger than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 2 pi, roughly 6.28. So I want solutions between 0 and 6.28. So if I look at what I've got here, I've got a negative 0.467. That's not going to be good. I'm going to have to adjust. And then for this one, I actually wrote down two choices. I have the negative pi plus 0.467. You've got a calculator now. So if in doubt, you can actually type that into your calculator. But that's definitely going to be negative. If you take negative pi plus 0.467, you get negative 2.67. That is not between 0 and 6.28. So that's not going to be good. Um, we already figured out what the next solution is. So if you take that and you add 2 pi, you're going to end up with this pi plus 0.467, and that's looking pretty promising. Again, I hope you can spot that without the calculator, but if you get any confusion going on, you can always check this and say 3.6-ish. Yes, that is good. That's between 0 and 2 pi. So I want alpha is approximately pi plus 0.467, and it is okay for you to give me this 3.61-ish, uh, but I'm completely happy to just get this with the pi in there showing me how you used your symmetry. That's really easy for me to look at and decide if you spotted the right thing or not. And then for the other one, we don't want the negative 0.467. It's too small. So if we want to land at the same point but have a bigger value, we should add 2 pi. And we can do that multiple times if we need to. If we add 2 pi and it's still negative, we would do it again. But here, a single 2 pi should be great. So we're going to get the negative 0.467 plus 2 pi. And once again, you can feel free to double check that if you're not feeling confident that you're really getting something. 5.816, that's definitely between 0 and 6.28, so that looks good. Okay, so this is the only difference with this one from our intro example is that we don't have a special value. So let's look at what other changes we can make. My second one has cosine t equals 0.3. So cosine t equals 0.3. The difference here, we don't have a special value, but that's similar to last time. The big difference is that we are given cosine instead of sine, which means this is my x value. So we're supposed to find all arc lengths t that make our x-coordinate on the unit circle equal to 0.3. 
So we're going to be using different symmetry this time. We will have symmetry across the x-axis. Those points are, uh, one is directly above the other. All right, so to get started, we need one answer. If it's a special value, you should know that answer and just write it down. If it's not a special value, you should be asking your calculator. So algebraically, we would solve by taking the inverse cosine of 0.3. We have to be really thoughtful about this because inverse cosine is only going to give us one answer, and we want all of them. Okay, so inverse cosine gives us about 1.266. Okay, so we have one arc length, and again, it's good to look at this picture and think about which one you're getting. Uh, this is giving me the positive, and I would expect it to. Inverse cosine always gives you an answer between 0 and pi, so I'm expecting to be on the top of the circle. Uh, if I want an arc length that lands at the bottom point, uh, there's, again, more than one possibility. The one that looks easy to me right now is to just flip over the x-axis and say, well, that's a negative 1.266. Not the only possibility, but that's the one that jumped out for me, so I'm going to use it. Negative 1.266. Um, and this is actually a great spot for us to try and get a little lazy. We always like to be lazy about writing unnecessary things. So instead of writing this out this way, you could just lump it together and say t is plus or minus 1.266. Okay, so we've got an arc length that lands at each of our points. The next thing we need is how often do we repeat these solutions? So 1.266 is great, but so is 1.266 plus 2 pi or plus 4 pi. So again, we look back up here and just make sure we haven't messed with the period, and we have not. Cosine of t should have a period of 2 pi, and then we tack that on. 2 pi k, k is an integer. So here is my all solutions. And once again, I think I want to play around just a little bit to make sure you're getting this. Uh, let's find solutions on 0 to 2 pi. So again, in your homework, you just follow directions. If it doesn't say this, you don't have to do it. If it just says solve, assume it's all solutions. But I know I asked you to bounce back and forth a little so you could practice both ways. On 0 to 2 pi, so let's see, I'm headed around the circle. I hit this point. That's my 1.266, so that one's really easy. 1.266, we're good. And then I continue around, and I hit this point, and I don't want to use the negative 1.266 because it is not bigger than 0. So I'm trying to figure out what this arc length is. And that arc length is uh, 2 pi minus 1.266. Or you can say it in the opposite order, negative 1.266 plus 2 pi, whichever you like. I always think about it as 2 pi minus 1.266. So those are the two answers that are between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, let's do one more in this video. So we're going to get a little phase shift in here. I have a cosine of theta plus pi over 2 equals 0.3. And I find that people get really mixed up and bogged down whenever we get any transformations in the mix. So I've decided that my advice is just to hide this from yourself. Really, you can leave it written there and just ignore it, but a lot of people have a hard time doing this. So let's just call this theta plus pi over 2 our t. And we can say, okay, well, for starters, let's just figure out when cosine t equals 0.3, and then we can worry about the phase shift. All this is going to do is shift all of our solutions back by pi over 2, so we can absolutely do that after the fact. So you want these nice simple equations when you go to the unit circle. I know, nice basic statement, that I'm looking for arc lengths that make my x-coordinate 0.3. And I deliberately made that, last, that match with what was up above so we could just focus on the new part based on this pi over 2. So we already know, so based on above, we already know that t should be 1.266 plus or minus 1.266 plus 2 pi k. That's all solutions. We really want to know the value of theta. So you can basically 
uh, hide the mess or just leave it there and ignore it. Figure out what gives you an x-coordinate of 0.3 and then just remember at the end that really we weren't looking for t, we were looking for theta and t is the same as a theta plus pi over 2. So we're going to subtract pi over 2 from both sides and you can just let the algebra do the work. You can figure that out intuitively as well. Say I'm shifting everything to the left by pi over two, so I need to subtract pi over two from all of my solutions. But I really like to just let the algebra take care of it. Uh, one thing that people are really tempted to do is try to subtract that pi over two out of the two pi k. And you don't want to do that. If you think about this, we're doing phase shift. That does not change the spacing between our solutions. So they should still be two pi units apart. So, so again, both the algebra and our knowledge of trig functions should say this. This still has a period of two pi, so this should still be two pi. And then algebra says you can't subtract the pi over two from a two pi k because they're not like terms. And when you subtract it from both sides, subtracting doesn't distribute. You don't have to subtract it from both terms. Just subtracting it from one is fine. You've done the trick. Okay, so there's our answer. Um, if we wanted the solutions on 0 to 2 pi, uh, this did shift our solutions back. So now instead of a 1.266, we have a 1.266 minus pi over 2, which from the picture, I can see that if I shift that back a quarter of the way around, it's going to be negative, or you can even check it here, 1.266. Six, 6 minus pi over 2 is a negative number, so that's actually not a good solution anymore. So we could say, all right, well then let's do our, for this point, let's do our 1.266 plus 2 pi minus pi over 2. So we can have, a, what are we calling this, theta is approximately 1.266 plus 2 pi minus pi over 2, and we can combine a little bit here, pi over 2, uh, pi over 2 subtracted from 2 pi gives us 3 pi over 2. So that looks like a good solution, and again you can check it, make sure you didn't get bigger than 2 pi. Uh, 3 pi over 2 plus 1.266 is 5.98-ish, which is not bigger than 2 pi, so this is 1. And then the other one, what did we have? Uh, this was down here, 2 pi minus 1.266. Uh, so if we subtract pi over 2, that one should actually be fine. So we can say we want our 2 pi minus 1.4. 1.266, and then we want to subtract off a of pi over 2. So here we get 3 pi over 2 minus 1.266. And that's our other one. And that should be the only two still. You're not going to hit any of the solutions twice in a lap around the circle just because you've shifted back. So those are our solutions on 0 to 2 pi. All right, thanks for watching.